You carry on, Phil. I, I'll let people in as they come. Okay, understood. Right. It's still a bit blurry, isn't it? Yeah. That's better. That's a bit better, isn't it? I'll tie and then, uh, worst case, I'll stick my hand up behind the fly when I'm done just to, to give you a sight of it all. So um, tonight, um, I'm going to be just nothing nothing too complicated, to be honest. Still water flies, what catch me fish is really uh, is sort of t the title of what I'm tying. Um, it's an extension of some of the stuff I teach at the Hearts Fly Dressers Guild. And um, I've been lucky enough to be on uh, Tyres Row at BFFI, um, which I'm, I'm there again next year. So if you are going to BFFI in 2024, please come and say hello. Um, but that's that's what I tie at BFFI. It's it's again, it's, it's not complicated. It's fairly straightforward. It's just nice looking, easy flies that work for me on the waters that I fish. So um, hopefully you'll get something from it. I'm happy to answer any questions as we go. I've got a few patterns, um, but again, I'll, I'll try and take requests if we've got requests. The first one, slightly con contentious. I, I, I didn't mean to cause an argument on social media about this, but I did. It's the Corrin buzzer. Um, a lot of people tell me it's the Vicar, but I was always shown that it was the Corrin buzzer. Um, so that's what I call it. Um, I've got a size 10 hook in the vise. I tie this really down to, to 14s, depending on the water and time of year. Um, but all sizes work. I've got some with CDC shuttlecocks to, to keep them just under the surface. And then I've got some with beads that take, that take them right down. And it is really one of the simplest buzzers you can tie. If you know the vicar, then I'm sure you know that already. But it's basically thread, breathers, and a bit of silver tinsel. Normally, people use um, polypropylene yarn for breathers. I'm not a massive fan of that. I don't think there's much in nature that is bright white. So what I'm using is that, which is uh, some coral vicuna dubbing. Um, and all I do you, you sort of with any dubbing is align the fibers just by pulling it apart, laying it over the top of each other, pulling it apart, laying over the top of each other, and then roll it into some sort of noodle in your fingers. So you've got a cigar shaped noodle, and then tie it in. Now what's what's going to happen is all the way up to the head. As you as you sort of pull, bits and bobs will come out, but eventually you'll find a, a happy medium where fibers stop being pulled out and you you're good to go. So we're going to snip off the back bit at an angle to give us that um, sort of slight taper up to the thorax. And we're just going to cover up all of our sins. And then we're going down to the bend of the hook. And then back up again. And then when you get to where the um, where the thorax starts, you need a piece of fill the tinsel. I'm not sure whether I said tinsel or wire at the start of the um at the start of the demo. It's definitely tinsel. That is. Any size will do. Again, it doesn't have to be silver. You can change the colours up. Silver's always worked for me, so it's how I tie it. But I've always um I've always been an advocate of You've got to have confidence in your flies, so you tie them how you like. If you know if you like a different colour or you like a shorter tail or anything like that, um, it's just about making the fly yours and having that confidence. And what we're going to do, just where the thorax starts, we're going to take a couple of wraps of this silver tinsel. 
and then tie it off. What's, what size hook was it, please? That was a size 10, just uh, mostly so you guys can see it on the video a bit better once I sort out the focus. Um, I'll tie it down to a 14 um, for the hot, hotter summer months. Um, but I, I fish Draycott and Ibrook quite regularly. And for that, I'll use a I'll use a 10. And then on the smaller still waters, I'll use a 10 early season. So once we've done all that and we've covered up the thorax, a few wraps of thread underneath the breathers just to kick them up a bit. And then a whip finish. And then I like the breathers to be an eye length over the eye. I also like using dubbing because it's less stiff than um, polypropylene yarn. It moves around a bit more. But there's the, um, doesn't want to come into focus there, does it? Hopefully you've got the idea that lit the tiny little flash at the start of the thorax, which was literally two turns of two turns of silver tinsel, and then the breathers and the thread, and that's it. A couple of coats of varnish just to uh, get it sinking through the layers, and you are good to go on that. Um, I fish it on its own. I fish it in a team. Um, I've used it under the bung. Don't tell anybody that. Um, it's it's it is my top producing buzzer, uh, which is um, I've got quite a lot in the box. You uh, the middle. I don't. How do I change that on Zoom? I know how to do it when I'm shooting a video. I'm I don't know how to do it when I'm on a Zoom call. Anybody be able to answer that? Yeah. What well, what I do, I just put my finger right next to the hook and move it, move it, and then it focuses on, on my finger normally. So people, doing it, it? No, people can see that though. Have you got a white shirt or anything, Phil? No, you tr tried that yesterday, didn't you, Phil? We did try that yesterday. It didn't it was very shiny. Bloody hell, you've got to be topless. <laughs> <laughs> Again, you wish. Um yeah, no, I think this is it was slightly better yesterday, uh, from a focusing perspective, but the white shirt definitely didn't work. But no, I don't know why it's you can see it much better with a blue background. I don't know why it's not focusing on the fly. It's constantly focusing on me. Do you change the silver for any other colours? Like when they seem to be on the blue and the reds in the buzzers, do you ever put a red or a blue flash in there? I don't on this fly. I do have buzzers that have a red collar just before the thorax. So I do that more with quill buzzers so that I, I then wrap the quill over the red hollow tinsel. Right. Um, with this one, this uh, I don't tie this on first. This always goes on second. Uh, when something's not worked, this the coron buzzer will then go on. Um, but it's always with a silver. I've seen Vickers tied with gold and, as you say, lots of different colours. I tend not to. Interesting. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm on a mobile phone. Okay. So that's the first one, the Corrin buzzer, as some people will want to call it the vicar. That's fine. We're not going to argue about that. <clears throat> Next up, um, I'm going to tie a dial back. Now, I'm not a massive fan of the dial back. I'm not going to lie. I don't have any confidence in it whatsoever, except this one. And this has all come about relatively recently. I've just, I've, I, I know how popular they are. I know how much they produce for people. Uh, when I started fly fishing and tying flies, I tied a lot of dialbacks in various different sizes, various different colors. Uh, I fished them and I didn't catch a sausage. And I was catching on other flies that I tied, so it's nothing to do with me, obviously. Um, and yeah, I, yeah I, I, I jest, but I could have been fishing at the, the wrong depth or with the wrong color or the wrong size. I understand that, but 
from a confidence perspective, I, I tend not to tie on a dial back when other people do, but I do tie this one on. Um, and the reason is um, a, a material that's relatively new to me that I've, I hadn't used before that, um, that I have found makes, from my perspective, makes a difference for this, which I'll, I'll talk about in a minute. But this is a, a B160 size 10. Again, I tie it 10s, 12s, 14s, depending on, on where I'm fishing. So I'm just going to lay down a fairly uneven bed of thread because <clears throat> I'm doing a squirrel dubbed body for this. So the uh, the need for a a decent bed of thread is not necessarily there as much as it would be for, for something else. I've got some uh, red game cock that I'm going to use for the tail and the beard on this. It's pretty standard other than other than the rib. Um, and I like, maybe this is why I never catch on them, I like my tail slightly shorter than, than a lot of other people. So I'm not going to have the tail the length of the body. Um, and what I'll do is I'll tie in the rib now as well. Find it. And the rib is this stuff, which is anti static bag. Now, I get this from Canada because Togan's Fly Shop very kindly send me some stuff to tie with, um, and they've sent me this pre cut anti static bag. I really like it because it's not as in your face as mylar. So, um, there isn't the really heavy sheen to it, um, but it still offers something a bit different. It works really well on buzzers um, if you're looking to get that gassy, ready to hatch type look. Um, it's it's as easy to work with as mylar is. Um, uh, but if you're going to get some, get the pre-cut stuff, because trying to cut it yourself with a a craft knife and a ruler is a little um, is a little tricky. So I'm going to tie all of that in and then come back down. To cut something like that, Phil, if yeah. you roll it up right thin to a tube, it would make it easier cutting it into sections. You yeah, you probably would. <clears throat> it probably would. I, I say you, you can. I I tried to search for anti-static bag in the UK, pre-cut anti-static bag from fly tying manufacturers, and I can't find any. Um, I'm not saying that's they don't do it, but I I struggled to find any. I'm lucky enough that this pre-cut stuff gets sent to me from Canada, but a lot of electrical equipment comes in anti-static bags, so it's fairly widely available you would then just need to cut it into strips and uh, and use it as you want. But um, that's the pain. It, it is. It, I, I, I can't disagree with you. You know, life sometimes is a bit too short. But this this stuff, as you can see, it's um, it's sort of shiny, but dull. Um, and it works it, for me. It works really well on this pattern. Um, for a body, I don't use Peacock curl, I like to use some squirrel dubbing to go with the uh, the slightly more buggy, the slightly more buggy look. So I'm just going to put some of that on the thread. Nice and tight. I always brush it out. Um, and then start wrapping. What I would say is try and make the body with as few lumps and bumps as possible. I think anti-static bag is like mylar in the way it behaves. So if it finds a bump, it will more than likely slip off that bump and you'll be left with a really uneven rib. I need a tiny bit more.
So I've just taken the squirrel up. And then um, we're going to do the anti-static bag. And a bit of uh, a bit of a tip here. I'm sure you, you all know it already. But if you if you're wrapping um, materials and you've got a rotary vise, just turn the vise a quarter turn. Um, that way you don't have to dodge the hook point and the thread at the same time. You can take the material past the hook point and then round the thread. It just makes makes it all a little bit easier. And then just you sort of you standard three or four turns up the hook shank. There's a bump there, it keeps slipping. Yep. And then tie it off. And what I've got here is and you're not gonna be able to see it on camera, unfortunately, but it's a really understated rib. There's a slight glint to it. Um, but then when you turn it against in a different sort of light, it almost disappears and then becomes part of the body. So I really like how how it it behaves like that. The light um, catching just... it well. Sorry? The light is catching it well. Good. It's, it's, I really like it as a material. I, I say I, I, I tie buzzers with it now. Um instead of instead of tinsel or mylar, just because it it looks really gassy which is, I think, is what you want when buzzers are, are trying to hatch. Um, is it me or has it got a blue tint to the bags? I think it's probably uh, probably the light. Um, what I'm looking at here is a grey, almost semi-translucent bag. Um, and when, when you get, um, I don't know, USB cables that come in anti-static bag, you can see the cable through the bag. So it's, it's kind of see-through, but with a grey-ish bit to it. I mean... That's you can see me through the bag, yeah. But then I can I can turn it and it goes sort of almost bluey there. And twist it again, it probably goes silver. So it just it adds a certain je ne sais quoi to 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 a fly that I don't like to make me like it. Um, and then I'm just going to stick stick the beard back along. I I use um, nylon. Like um, oh, okay. maximum uh, fishing thread a lot from my ribs because I think yeah. that adds a very similar effect. Yeah, I can imagine it does actually. I'm just going to tidy up the head. Yeah. And we're finish. The beauty of pre-cut anti-static bag is it, you can get it pre-cut in different sizes. I, this is, what's this, 0 0.5 millimetres. So trying to cut that with a, a craft knife and a, and a ruler is probably going to cause you, I mean, you can see it's shining on the rib. Um, and then I'd give that, a, maybe give that a brush out on the bank. I won't do it here. It, it, I find it, it kind of depends what, what the fish are looking for. Um, but trying to cut 0.5 millimeters with a ruler and a craft knife is is going to be a bit of a pain. Um, I've also got a set that taper from 0.5 to 1.25 millimeters, so that gives you a if you use that as a rib, quite a nice tapered effect, um, which is something that is found in nature on on those insects. So um, yeah, I really I'd say I, I really like anti-static bag. It has tra transformed a number of the patterns that I um, that I fish with. Is that now? No. Uh, what about? I just wonder if something dark would make a difference. Green sometimes works. So. It'd be the worst, isn't it? Yeah, uh, on that one, it does. Okay. All right. I'll I'll take some photos and post them in the um in no, the no. chat. Um, later on, once we're once we're offline, I'll stick it in the Facebook group so that okay. you can see them all. Um, and Derek, if you message me your address because I've lost it, um, I'll send all these flies up, and you can put them in as part of an auction item for um, Alex Jardine's lad. Oh, magic! Thank you. Okay, so that's the anti-static bag dial back.
which is the only dial back I will fish now. If you want, Phil, if you want to make your life easier rather than using a Stanley knife or something to cut, get yourself one of those. It's a rotary cutter. Oh, very good. It's a good, it's, it, well, you, it yeah, is like a razor blade. Like a small pizza cutter. Yeah, but it's a razor blade. Excellent. Brilliant. Great when your wife, your wife does a lot of crafting. You just nick hers. <laughs> That's a genius idea, actually. That would, that would be far easier, wouldn't it? And safer as well, probably, for your fingers. Yeah, it's got a it's got a guard on it, as you can do, and it comes in four different sizes. Oh, I love a smaller that. I mean, one than that, this one, and then two above it. Yeah, well, let's face it, craft knives don't have a guard on them, do they? Blimey, O'Reilly. No. Okay. So that was uh, that was the ASB. So the next one is, and I know we have a lot of river fish, uh, river anglers. I was going to say fishermen. That's very bad of me. River anglers on the call. Um, this is actually a river pattern I've ripped off, which basically means made bigger for still water flies, no, still water fish. Uh, and I, some people have probably come across it. It's Higa's SOS, which I think stands for Save Our Skin, but should probably really stand for Save Our Session. Um, I tie this on size 16s for the river, um, and I fished it on the Amwell Magna river down near me and had three rainbows hooked a brown and lost it and a greedy perch took it as well which is a bit annoying um and it works really well as a point fly when i'm straight line nymphing on the reservoirs um or on the smaller still waters and i do that in a size 12. so that's what i'm going to show you tonight and i've got the vice i've got a size 12 barbless grub hook in the vice and a 3.2 millimeter silver brass bead. Um, you can stick tungsten on if you want, for, certainly for the faster flowing water in, in some of the rivers at the times of year, tungsten would work better because it'll get it down quicker. Um, that being said, for, for still waters, for me, I like it sinking that little bit slower and just falling through the layers a little bit slower just so that the fish have a chance to see it. But what we're gonna do is catch on the thread as normal and then take that well into the bend of the fly here. Not like that though. Because we're going to put a pheasant tail tail on this fly. And then get rid of your tag end. Um, Tail fibers first, black cock pheasant tail. I think the original was melanistic. If you've got melanistic, use that, but I don't, so dyed black works for me. I've lined up the tips. I'm going to let thread turns just bring that pheasant tail on top of the hook shank. And then I'm going to adjust the length of the tail because it's obviously way too long. And then I'm going to take the thread in as close to touching turns as I can back up to behind the bead, just so that um, you're adding a little bit of bulk to the body, first of all. But the body is made, of, the body's thread on this. You could, to be fair, you could use black cock pheasant tail if you wanted to. Um, the original called for the thread, so that's what I'm, that's what I'm showing you. And then we need a rib of silver wire, so I'll tie that back in as I go. And it also means I can put the wire into the back of the bead just to secure it and keep it out of the way. Um, and I like to keep the wire on my side of the hook at all times. Okay. And then we're going to come back up again. Touching turns all the way because this is this is the body of the fly. And then a bit of a taper, not much. It's it's quite thin thread I'm using, so I'm just going to go down halfway, come back up again, and leave it at that. If you wanted to, you could build a, a bit more of a lump of taper and almost use this as a as a caddis type pattern. Um, and then we're going to take the take the tinsel take, take the wire up 
in open turns to rib the fly. And I've tried this in copper instead of silver. And I've also done olive and orange, which is a a classic still water combination, I believe. Um, but the this original um, tying of, of the black and silver always produces more for me than any other colour combination I've tried. Uh, I always find myself coming back to this, to, to the point now that my 11-year-old son, who started fishing with me, um, goes into my box and steals these, which is mildly annoying when I want to find one and can't. Okay, so we, as it stands, we've got the rib and the body and the tail in. Um, we now need a thorax cover of red holographic tinsel. Um, I've got medium here. You could use large, um, but it just it goes on here. Make sure it's on top of the fly. You don't want it because the thread turns will, will take that round. You don't want that to happen. And you also want to make sure you've um gone back far enough so the, the sort of the standard rule of the thorax being a third of the body length you need to make sure that that's the case here for sure snip off the excess um we then want a thorax of black dubbing If you've got some with a bit of twinkle through it, you could probably use that as well. I don't find it needs it. You want the thorax to be quite bulbous, whether you're tying a, a six size 16 or 18 for the rivers or a size 12 for, for the still waters, you want quite a fat thorax. a bit more. Right. Okay, so you've got a little little rugby ball thorax there. And now for the wings. And the wings are a single strand of pearl crystal flash what i've done all i've done is fold it in half folded it in half and um then cut it so we've got two strands here um and then tie that in right behind the bead a bit of a swine to get once you've got it there you go Pull it tight. And then we're going to figure of eight. So we're going to go behind the, behind the ones closest to me and in front of the ones closest to you. And then the other way, just so that we've gone behind both sets of wings and they're not going to come out. Um, so you can see we've got, we've got the wings there. I'm going to cut those down to size. Don't worry. And then all we need to do is bring the thorax cover over the top and tie that down. Snip off the excess thorax cover. Give it a bit long. Okay. And a tie the tiniest bit more black dubbing just to hide. our sins basically it's a really 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 thin dubbing noodle here just to i guess stabilize the bead fill in the gaps and then whip finish there we go And then to cut the wings to size, all I do is line them up with the back of the hook. 
So I'll pull them back, line them up with the back of the hook, and snip. And then just separate the, uh, the strands of crystal slash. Hilarious aside, it was my 15th wedding anniversary yesterday. And um, 15 is crystal, apparently, crystal or watches. I was never going to get a watch as a wedding present, but my wife actually bought me this pearl crystal flash because it had the word crystal in it. And then you've got, you've got the wings just sitting up like that, just a hint of a wing, the thorax cover and the rib. Um, that's not worth it. But um, yeah, a really, really top producing nymph for me on still waters and rivers. You ever use that without a beak? Or replaced with the glass beads and it almost fish in the uppers? I haven't actually. That's a that's not a bad idea. That would work quite well, I think. Um yeah, certainly one to consider. I mean, the glass beads almost look like silver anyway, don't they? So yeah. that would work very, very well. Uh, I hadn't even thought of that, to be honest. Yeah, I don't like I don't use many tungsten. The water's not that deep. Fair enough. And um, you know, so I don't like beads which take it right down to the bottom no no i mean I, when i fished I've, I've only fished the ml bagged once i've not, not fished too many rivers but when i fish rivers i have brass beads on as well i don't have tungsten on uh, and certainly i don't want that in the still waters because i don't want it plummeting to the depth really quickly but um plastic or glass what's would work of... really well to have it up in the water yeah so what's the name again phil Higa's SOS, H I G A apostrophe S. So mm -hmm. a guy called Spencer Higa um, invented it. So it's Higa's SOS, save our session. H I G. H I G A, the guy, and then apostrophe S. Ah, uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Very yeah, interesting fly. I really like it. And, uh, you know, I can't take any credit for this whatsoever. It's a complete copy. So if you Google Higa's SOS, there'll be various videos. The one I like the best is um, Tim Flagler or whatever his name is from Tightline Productions and, and Orvis. Um, fly Fish Food has also done one relatively recently for this fly as well. But I've been tying it for years and I really, really like it. Very simple to tie as well. Yeah, very much so. You can knock quite a few out in a short space of time, which is uh, which is good if you're you know sort of planning on losing a few up trees or, or whatever else. Uh, right. So I'm working my way working my way through the layers here, um, and this is quite a risk. This fly because it's got some a quill body on it, and we all know how well that goes. Um, but nonetheless, I'm going to tie a quill emerger. Um, and again, this is one I've kind of, I've just dropped the hook. This is one I've experimented with a fair bit and mucked around with different colours and different sort of combinations and whatnot. And, and this is what works best for me. So I've got a size 12 curved nymph hook in the vise. Um, I'm going to need that done and um, I'm just going with black thread. I'm not sure this thread's going to last the last the demonstration. We'll have to see. Take bets on when it's going to it's going to run out. And I'm going to take a nice even because we've got a quill body coming on and a nice even um, nice even underbody. Oh yeah. Right, that's probably okay there. Now the uh, right, it's, it's a pearly butt emerger is what I've called it, um, and the reason for that is there's a pearl butt. Surprisingly, I seem to have lost. Never mind. I'll tie some more. Um, this stuff I don't know where I got it from. It's a lovely sort of shade of. It's not a shade of green. Um, 
sadly the label fell off yonks ago and I can't really can't really replace it but it, it works great for little sort of hot spots and stuff like that. It's not one of Phil, um, oh, what's his name, sorry, um, Steve Parton's products, is it? No, it definitely wasn't a Steve Parton one. Well, it does look a bit like one of the ones he did. Um, okay. Then we're going back down. I'm going to tilt the vise so that I've got thread away from hook point. And then literally two or three turns of this pearl mylar just to add that little bit of something at the bottom and then tie it off. Okay, now we are going for a hand-stripped peacock quill. I think this is ginger, but um, natural works just as well. I'll snip the tip off at slightly angle. And tie it in. Not too tightly because I don't want it to snap. And then and then take the thread all the way back up in touching turns. And at this point, I'm just going to put a whip finish in to save my work because I don't want that thread slipping off the front of the curved hook. Okay, right, and then it's a question of just wrapping the quill up the body. Without snapping it. And I I like to leave a little bit of a gap between each turn just to accentuate the black line that's on the quill. Some people don't. Um, I just prefer how that looks. But again, it's your fly. Tie it how you like. Oh, no. It's going to go. It's just well, it's with a dark edge. Sorry? You always lead with a dark edge. I do. I'll try and persevere just because you all get the idea. There's a massive split in that right in the middle, which I'm sure you can see. It's sticking up proud. So I'll, I'll tie another one for the auction, Derek. But... Put a super glue on that. Oh, well, I was going to um, I was going to coat it with resin anyway, but yeah, I'm not convinced it's going to look very good. But then when we get up to where the thorax goes, we're going to tie off that um, tie off that quilt. I soak my 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 quills before I use them. I do just in water. Yeah, little 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 uh, bowl of water, and ten twenty quills sitting in it. Sure. Every day's a school day, isn't it? I did not think of that. Okay, so I'm really sorry, it's really blurry. Um, you've got the quill body. Normally, I'd then put resin or varnish over the top of that. I'm not going to bother because that splits quite on slightly, so I'll redo it. But then for me, it's a question of putting in the shuttlecock, which is for a size 12, I use five CDC feathers. I think the number depends on the quality of them as well, though, to a point. So 
if they're really bushy, get away with less. The other tip I could add to what Derek says, I use cigar tins like this with two pieces of kitchen paper. Right. Which are wet, and then put the quills in the tin, close the lid, and just leave them. That's a good idea. And it just works very well. Yeah, yeah, it sounds it. Sorry, I don't mean to keep interrupting. No, no, no. It's, I think, you know, sort of, as I say, every day is a school day. I'm, I'm here to learn as much as I can from people who have been tying longer than me. So if it means that my quills don't split, then I'm more than... It may look old. I don't think I'm that old. <laughs> oh, I didn't say I didn't say I'll do it. Do you all have like the fly pucks at the stores over there where you buy flies in? Yeah. Um, that looks like put, an August box. You can just put a sponge in it. Oh, that's a genius idea. Isn't it? You can use it for marabou also. And then I just cut the sponge in half. And so you can put your biops in there to soak. That's a good, good idea. Good. Love that idea. You don't look old either, either Britt. Forty in a few years, we're getting up there. That's okay because it's my idea. Okay, so we've got we've got the shuttlecock. We want a couple of wraps in front just to kick it up slightly. And then this is this is where my biggest area of experiment has experimentation has come from. Um, for the thorax, I used to just use hairs ear dubbing and. Um, squirrel dubbing and stuff like that. I've actually changed now. I've got some uh, Vicuna dubbing green drake. So some sort of olive, olive dubbing. I really like the green drake. It's quite quite a natural green. Um, so I'll take a pinch of that and I'll cut through it some gold light bright. Again, we're talking, I don't know whether this would, I've not fished this on the rivers. I don't know whether it would work for the, the wily old river fish, for the stupid stockies that hang around the reservoirs this is absolutely lethal um so i'll snip up a bit of light bright and then i'll um mix it in with the um with the dubbing again just by rolling it around in my fingers pulling it apart rolling it up pulling it apart rolling it up It does get everywhere, though. And then that's that's the thorax. Light bright, surprisingly easy to dub as well, which helps. Probably have a bit much there. Back down, cover up the tie-in point of that CDC, and you come back up. Nice, uh, a nice bowl of thorax, and then we're going to save that last turn for in front of the, uh, the front of the CDC, and then whip finish. And one thing that, again, one thing that I found works and produces better for me if I do this is brushing the thorax up into the shuttlecock. I don't know why, apart from the fact the fish are stupid. But, um, yeah, literally brushing it up into the CDC produces for me better than if I don't do that. Um, but, yeah, that's... Um, Barring the split quill, that is the CDC shuttlecock that I will fish on on reservoirs and what if that black would work again? No, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever, does it? Sorry, that's not uh, it's not working very well at all. So yeah, that's um, that's a, a, a again. If if fish are when I'm fishing the reservoirs, if they're 
taking off the surface, then that goes straight on um, and more often than not produces. Okay. Right. Something simple and garish now because no still water demonstration should be without something simple and garish. This is a hothead damsel nymph. Um, if I if I turn up to a fishery and I, I don't know, you know, if the catch return book's not much help or, you know, I just don't know what's what's been working, this is what goes on first. This is my searching pattern. Um, when I'm uh, when I'm out, um, I need some olive thread. In the vice, I've got a size ten. Um, I think this is a daichi. It's it's a really wide gape on it, which I really like for this. Um, but effectively, a size 10 wet fly hook would work really, really well. Um, any brand you like. And the bead is 3.2 millimetres. It's brass again. Um, unless you're fishing really, really deep waters, you don't want it sinking quickly. Um, I've caught a lot of fish in the margins with this fly. So... Um... Sorry? Oh, sorry, I thought someone said something. Um, yeah, so you don't want it, you don't want it plummeting. You want it um, dropping nicely through. We're then going to tie in a tail of olive marabou, if I can get into the packet. Um, and I like, I, again, I don't know how many people do this. It's, it's nothing new I learned off the internet, but I really like tying in my marabou tails behind the bead as opposed to at the end. Yeah, I yeah. Yes, I'm freaking out. It, um, it allows me to make sure the tail stays on top of the fly. But I want a good, good couple of inches of marabou, a nice big, a nice big pinch. I've lined up the tips. Um, and what I'm going to do is snip off the, um, what's it called? Slip off that horrible the the, the curlies at the end. Um, and I'm also just going to take my thumb and forefinger and pinch out some of the fuzz from the bottom of the feathers to uh, to reduce the bulk of the body just slightly. Um, so it's just like your stalking bug, bug, is it? It's not heavy enough for that. It could be tied as a stalking bug, but I, I don't use it to stalk unless I can see fish right in the margins because I don't want it. It doesn't drop quick enough to, to be a traditional stalking bug. Um, it probably could be tied that way if you wanted it to, but I fish it more as a traditional damsel nymph. Thanks. Um, I, it, it comes with a dubbed body. You could probably replace that with some sort of olive wire, and then you've got your, you know, and, and resin that up, and you've got your stalking bug right there. So I've tied the marabou on. Um, I've done three turns underneath the marabou tail to try and aid it not to wrap round the bend of the hook whilst you're whilst you're fishing. Um, and then you want a nice, I like a nice long marabou tail on my damsels because you can always pinch it off. You can't add to it. So I, I usually go two, um, two hook lengths for the tail. Well, I and put my... a dab of super glue just under the tail at the, at the end of the body, just helps to stop the tail wrapping. Oh, that's a good idea. It sort of keeps it in place, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a really good idea. Okay, so what I have here is orange crystal flash. And I'm going to double the strand over. This is going into the tail. Um, so I'll tie it on one side. So effectively two strands on one side in the tail. Okay. Snip off your excess. Two 
two strings on your side. You just want to make sure they're broadly sitting the same way as the others in simple fixes. And because we're dubbing the body, you can get away with it being not very even and um, what not dubbing covers a thousand sins, doesn't it? So that's where we're at. We're going to snip that crystal flash now, slightly, ever so slightly longer than the marabou. The rib on this fly is orange hollow tinsel. This is the medium. I've tried it in the large. I don't like how it looks personally, but um, again, it's your fly. But this one isn't overly complicated. And I tie my blue flash damsels like this as well, obviously with blue, not orange there. And then it's just a question of um, dubbing the body. I don't do a hackle at the end. It's just, it's literally a dub body. So it's almost like a leaf pattern, really. And for this, I'm using a medium olive. Again, I'm using Vicuna dubbing. But um, as I said with the ASB, because we've got a a mylar type rib. Try and get the body without any lumps and bumps, otherwise the rib's just gonna slip off any bump it finds and become uneven. And I'm sure the fish don't really mind, but it really offends me if my rib isn't even. My OCD gets a bit twitchy if I've got an uneven rib. And normally with smaller flies, um, I'd stabilize the bead by putting some thread wraps underneath it. With this, we don't need to because I'm going to jam the dubbing right up behind the bead. So it's it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to cause any imbalance to the fly. There we go. Right. So that's the body on. It's a very big chunky mouth, all this, so we're all good. And then just wrap wrap the orange hollow up. Open turns. Two or three is all you're gonna get, but that's fine. That's all it needs. And these are these are super simple to tie. You can crank these out really quite quickly once you get into the swing of it. Snip off your excess. Again, I like a tiny, tiny bit more just to lay over the top of where you've tied that ribbon. Again, it's probably just because I'm a pedant, but there we are. And then whip finish. A good searching pattern as well. Yeah, I, it, as I say, it's it's what goes on first most times. If I do, if I don't really know what's what's working and what's not, and more often than not, it produces if you're doing it with a blue rib, do you change the colour of your bead? Yes, I do, and the flash in the tail as well. I mean, it might not be blue flash in the tail; it might be pearl or something like that, but um, effectively I'll change the ribbon, the bead to match, and then the, the tail flash. And that's it, safe for a mainly blue damsel. Yeah, it, yeah, I would, it would be a blue bead, a blue metallic bead and um, blue hollow rib. 
but I say that is that's accounted for an awful lot of fish for me, as I'm you know as I'm sure damsels have for everybody. But that that pattern in particular is, as Derek said, a great searching pattern. Something I have massive confidence in, which means it gets tied on more often than not. Nice fly. Thanks. Right. Um, another. Another another Stillwater favourite of mine. Certainly, I do a lot of my in-laws live down in Kent, so I fish tented and trout waters quite a lot. And this pattern, for whatever reason, is absolutely lethal down there. Um, but I've had success on it all over in all of the still waters that I fish. Um, and it's a rubber leg daddy. Um, there's nothing subtle about it. It's uh you know, whilst I say it's a daddy long legs pattern, it's again, it's an attractor as opposed to a, a natural imitation. But it works really well. And I've got a size 10 wet fly hook in the vise and a four mil fluorescent yellow bead. Um, again, you can change change the bead colour to suit yourself. And we're going back to the black thread. Uh, and you want to take that down to the end and snip off the excess. Right, rubber legs. I have got here pre-prepared because I can't do this on camera because I'd make a hash of it. Um, oh, there they are, I see it better. Flexi floss um, that I've snipped into sections and I, I can't really see it on that one. I've tied a knot in it so that it broadly imitates um you know the daddy long legs legs um i have found that uh the knot makes not a blind bit of difference to my catch rate um but as it's as i've called it a daddy long legs i figured i'd probably better put a knot in but we're going to do two um two of these rubber legs at the base sticking out the back And as this is an attractor, you can tie them really as long as you want. That's good enough for me. This is basically give me as much movement as possible, please. That's what it does. So we tie that in. The body's um body's tinsel. Snip those off. Pull them right tight and then take them, take them down. Just make sure you're happy with how they're sitting. I'm all right with that. This is either try and get them on the side of the hook, so pull them down slightly. That way, they they naturally spread. Um, adds a bit more movement. Um, I then need um some flash. Um, so what I've got here is something called blue black Kironi skin. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a mixture of blue and blue and black, depending on the light. But again, it's it's a type of mylar. We just need one strand of that. Okay, and let me tie that in. Take your thread back up to fairly close to the bead. Snip off your excess. And then we're going to take that Kironi skin in touching turns up the body. Yeah. 
and snip that off. So you, you can kind of see the blue. It's almost almost giving a rib effect, really, the blue and black together. It's just um, yeah, it's something I quite like. And then we're going to stick the second pair of legs on. And they are also going to be pointing backwards. But they're going to be shorter than the other ones. Slightly. And again, you want to make sure they're sat right, one on either side. And when you're happy, tie up and snip off the excess again. Now, for the um, thorax, I've got some black dubbing with a bit of UV through it. Just to, again, we're talking movement and in your face here. Um, just to really grab the fish's attention. So I'm just going to dub the thorax. And I'm just going to come. No, I'm not. I was going to come behind those legs, but I don't like how that looks, so I'm not going to do that. And then the final pair of legs goes in. Unless you drop them onto a black carpet. <laughs> Found it, sorry. Eyes like a hawk, me. So the final pair of legs goes in. These are being tied in forwards, again, as long as you want. Um, we're, talking, we're talking movement here. So I'm just going to try and manipulate them a bit. Don't know what's leg and what's not anymore. Right, I'm going to risk snipping those off. They don't know that they've got knots in them. And then just a bit more dubbing to tidy up what you've just done. And a bit like with um, the Higa's SOS, I like to sort of figure of eight round these legs that stick out the front a little bit, kicks them up, uh, and then pull them forwards just to give you a bit of a bulbous dubbed thorax. One final turn, and then whip finish in front of the legs, but behind the bead. Bill, that fly must kill on every water, doesn't it? Uh, I've had a fair bit of success with it, I'm not going to lie, yeah. Um, when the fish are in the mood, I think, is, is probably the best way of of phrasing that. It's um, got so much movement. Yeah, very much so. It, it it works really well on its day. I've got, I've got a, a version that I tie with a partridge hackle in it as well, which just adds more movement and, you know... It, it's very, very in your face. It's they—they they just want to eat it to see what it is. I think, but it—it just—you can see it better there, actually. Yeah, I got Everything. killed on a reservoir not long ago. We were fishing, and everyone else was fishing. None of us were catching anything. This bloke turned up, right? Went out in the boat on his own and was pulling them out. Every other cast, he was catching them. And we said, "What are you using?" And he was using a gold headed, just like that. How was he? Fair enough. And it was absolutely killing. Wow. I think I saw originally, I think there was the Pearly Daddy by Sid Knight, I think, that sort of sparked my interest. So I, I worked on the pearl body and then just liked the Pearly Daddy as a stalking fly, but didn't like it as a pulling fly because it was too heavy. So, again, this isn't, you know, I'm not claiming credit for this. It's not rocket science, is it? But this, having experimented with colours and, and whatnot, works really well for me. You'd almost call it a six leg um apps bloodworm. Yeah, it could be, yeah, you could, absolutely. When you take the dubbing off, it's almost an apse, isn't it? You, you almost you turn it another way and it looks a bit like a spider with two legs missing. So it's yeah. just something to 
attract the fish's attention, I think, and get them to take out of aggression rather than imitation. Yeah, but trike don't count, do they? <laughs> I'm sure they don't. Who cares what it's called if it catches? Exactly. Exactly. That's my that's my feeling. It's, um, and if you if you say daddy long legs, people think you're imitating as well. So you're all good, aren't you? So yeah, that's um that's the rubber leg daddy. Um and I think that's probably about it. I reckon I think... in red that would work well, like a blood worms cast out in the winter. Yeah, very much so. I think you know it's with uh, legs like it, that. Yeah, and you can take you take the brass bead off and stick on a uh, the mylar's called Kironi skin. Uh, again, it's from that company in Canada that send me stuff to tie with. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, there you go. Togan's Kironi skin. Black steel is another option, and that's that's mottled silver and black. You can see that there. Um, the one I used was blue black. They've got wine. They've got copper. They've got loads of different colours of Kironi skin. Um, that I've I've heard of Togan's fly shop. You have. No, I haven't. You have, and they're based in Canada. Um, I'm in the UK, so they um, they very kindly asked me to be on their pro team a couple of years back and sent me some of this stuff to tie with. And I, I, I'm not going to lie, I, I probably wouldn't have used Togan stuff otherwise. Um, but I really like this because it's um, it's got the flash and it's like mylar but it's thin and it's got plenty of plenty of movement if you look at yeah you know it's not stiff yeah it's some just, of ours can be a bit stiff can it which what we yeah get. it collapses on itself and and what i find is uh, that the exchange rate from canada seems to be around about canadian dollar to to great british pound so the, the and the and the prices on Certainly on the token site, it seemed to be broadly similar to ours. So, um, if you if you like, if you're looking at potentially ordering from them, let me know, and I can have a chat to the guys and see see we, how we can maybe make this work. But where banks you know, are they based? Oh, I'm going to say British Columbia. Right. I think. Um, but yeah, so um, um, there might there's probably stuff. Over here, you could try as well, but that's that's what I use, and there's loads of different colours of it. And I use actually, I use the copper, which is there. Um, I'm get confused which way the camera goes. That's the copper stuff. I use that in some stalking bugs for the tail because it it imparts a load of movement, whilst also having the uh, eat me now out of aggression attraction that that trap yeah. like from stalking bugs. Um, so it really is quite soft as long as it's got that soft movement it's uh, it's all right isn't it well that's right i mean i used to like the vivis tinsel but they only did it for about a week yeah and it needs to be if you're using it for tailing material it needs to be quite thin doesn't it for the body yeah. it's le less important for bodies but certainly for the tail it needs to be thin and mobile i don't know no. why they stopped well i just ask a question nothing to do with what you're doing tonight i've got some calf tails that were rather smelly so i decided to wash them right a bloody dye come out of them how can this that's not ideal is it um doesn't, vin doesn't vinegar vinegar sets it oh, yeah. re-dye them tony re-dye them re-dye them yeah they've still got the color but it keeps coming out because of wet yeah. Vinegar, you should be able to reset them with vinegar. Yeah. No, well, tried. I don't I don't dye up my own my own materials, but I know that vinegar, as I said, vinegar stems. No, Probably just think of vinegar then, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> the fish won't notice that. You I think? use white vinegar, not milk, by the way. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That smells better than what you did smell like. I said it's better than this thing a dead cow, wasn't it? Yeah. Well. <laughs> so yeah, that's um that's me, I think. Anyway, thanks, Phil. Uh, yeah, apologies for well. the camera. What I'll do is I'll take some photos of all of these and then stick them in the uh, in the in the chat group. I'll i I'll I'll send you um Derek's address. It's one Eureka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, thank you very much for tuning in. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks, Phil. Thanks, thanks very Phil. Much. Very good. Thanks. Thanks, yeah. thanks Phil. Thanks, Phil. Yeah. Thank right, you very much. Care, Cheers, yeah. guys. Thank you. Oh. And girls. I know. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Cheers. Thank you very much. Derek, do you know if the, the competition's still on in two weeks' time at Draycott? I've got no idea. I've never fished Draycott. All right, nice okay. water. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Stunning water. Yeah. Fish fight like trains as well, don't they? Yes, unfortunately they do. <laughs> you go try try to be cocky and go slightly light, you'll you'll soon regret it. Absolutely. I, I fish a five weight there and, and it sometimes it's just on the limit, but the the it's so much fun fighting a fish on a five weight at Draco. Yeah, suicide. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, Touchwood, not yet. Yeah. I'm just trying to see if there's any places left on the um, 